welcome to the old classic car channel. Today's uh, brochure review is for the Jaguar Mark II in 2.4, 3.4 and 3.8 guys. Uh, this brochure isn't dated but the car itself was built from late 59 through to 1967 and it embodied all the elements of grace, space and pace that Sir William Lyons uh, approved of. Like I say, production of this car continued till 67, although the slightly modified 240 continued until early 1969 and the 340 till September 68. But this brochure is for the proper full, full bodied Mark II, if you like. It was sold alongside the S Type, the Mark 10, and the 420G, and also the 420. Um, but this was sort of the more sporting saloon uh, model in the range, if you like, and it replaced uh, what was retrospectively called the Mark 1 which was also available as a 2.4 or a 3.4 eventually. In all, 83,976 Mark IIs were built, plus uh, just over 7,000 of the 240s and the 340s, uh, which continued in production until the uh, XJ6 came into production. But this is probably from the early 1960s, and I bought this from a guy who lives locally and actually bought one of these back in the day. So let's have a quick look inside this brochure for the Mark II. Now I believe there were probably two versions of this particular brochure produced. There was a, a simpler fold-out brochure with fewer pages in and then there was the spiral bound versions uh, which have a lot more pages and information in them. So let's have a quick look inside and see what Jaguar had to say about their Mark II. So here we go, the introduction. <coughs> From the moment of their introduction, the 2.4 litre and 3.4 litre Jaguar saloon scored such instantaneous successes and created such a worldwide demand that a doubling of the company's output became necessary. Even so, demand still exceeds the supply, a situation which so far from inducing complacency has spurred the company to further efforts in effecting improvements to cars already of outstanding design and performance. These efforts are crystallised in the Mark II Jaguars comprising 2.4, 3.4 and 3.8 litre models and have gained much inspiration from the close relationship which has existed between owners and the company which has found expression in the many thousands of letters addressed to us from every part of the world. So here we've got a maroon and a white example on white walls presumably an American market car, a Jaguar cars, Coventry, England. So let's carry on. And here we have a photograph of a blue Mark II on wires, looking very smart. And uh, over here we have the specification for the Mark II in 3.4 and 3.8 litre form. The 3.8 litre was the daddy of the range if you like, but many people reckon that the 3.4 was the sweeter engine of the two. Uh, we've got all the specification here, I won't go into it all, but I will zoom in so you can have a read of it if need be. You've got the manual gearbox or you could have the automatic, uh, depending on which you want. But nowadays the manual is the car to go for, I suspect. So let's keep on going. And then we've got the 2.4 litre specification page. Again, I'll have a closer look in on that page so you can have a read of that. Uh, the body, all steel, four door, five seater saloon, integral body chassis construction providing maximum rigidity with minimum weight. So let's have a look here over here. And this, presumably, is a 2.4, although visually there are very few ways of identifying a 2.4 from a 3.4 or a 3.8. You'd have to have a look on a little badge on there from this angle if you're getting close enough, but it's got the big thick chunky bumpers of a proper Mark II. The 240s and the 340s were sort of cheapened versions with cheaper interiors and they just had a slimmer bumper, which some people prefer, but I much prefer the, the chunkier bumpers myself. Uh, if you were going to buy one of these, there are many things to be looking for. You, the engine um, is quite a robust unit if well looked after, but if it isn't, the XK straight six, <clears throat> it can be an expensive, expensive engine to fix up. As for rust, well, anywhere along the lower edges, the floors, the sills, typical of any British car of the day, really. The box sections that run down the centre of the spine of the car, they need checking, and also the crow's feet under the front here behind the bumpers. It can all rot away there quite merrily. So even a car that superficially doesn't look too bad up top, if you start seeing rot around here where the uh, these little lamps are uh, leaded on, then that can usually be a sign that things are pretty bad underneath as well. So again, you have to buy these cars very much with your eyes open nowadays. But back then, they were a very popular choice for a, for a rapid 
relatively affordable car and beloved of the criminal uh, fraternity as they easily show a clean pair of heels to the the police in their Wolseleys and so on so let's have a looky here so we've got the interior view here showing the, the classic Jaguar dashboard which continued in revised form in the XJ6 not exactly the same but very similar with the, the bank of switches and the, the smaller gauges in the middle there and the, the important ones in front of the driver here so we've got all the layout here all the details and so on of the information you might want with a, with a radio there which is quite advanced for the day and then over here with every instrument plainly in view and all hand controls within inches of the driver's fingertips all peering groping and fumbling are entirely eliminated the extra large no fume ashtray is as readily accessible to the driver as it is to his front seat passenger and over here we've got a little bit more information about the courtesy lights are provided above the center pillars and additional interior lights are located in the rear quarters all operate by the opening and closing of any door and are independently operable by the driver large ventilating windows provide maximum extraction of stale air ashtrays are conveniently placed in armrests note also the degree of rearward vision afforded by the extra wide semi wraparound rear window uh, the wider larger windows were one of the features of the Mark II compared to the Mark I the Mark I had a much smaller rear window and the, and the front screen as well but the Mark II gave a much more airy cabin and here we have the, uh, the boot space being demonstrated the large capacity luggage compartment permits the carrying of an exceptional quantity of luggage including golf clubs the floor beneath which a spare wheel and hand tools are carried is covered with thick felt, uh, felt backed vinide which is easily cleaned and affords protection to suitcases when side lights are in use the interior is automatically illuminated when the lid is raised and it was quite spacious if not particularly tall load area let's keep on going here passenger comfort of the most luxurious order the Jaguar system of interior heating with which is incorporated demisting and defrosting ensures an even distribution of controlled warmth throughout the entire car warm air of desired temperature is ducted from the heater to the front compartment and is also passed at floor level directly into the rear passenger compartment both the temperature and the rate of flow are controllable to meet varying needs Flush fitting folding tables are recessed into the rear of the front seat backrests and remove the hazards of, from taking refreshment within the car. All very smart. And over here we have a drawing of the Jaguar's famous XK six cylinder engine, uh, which made its debut many years before in the XK120 and evolved over the years and continued in production right the way through to the Series 3 XJ6. Acknowledged throughout the world as a perfect expression of engineering efficiency, the Jaguar XK engine has carried works and entered them privately owned and entered Jaguar cars to success after success on the racetracks of the world, including no less than five record-breaking victories in the most gruelling race of all, the Le Mans 24 Hours International Grand Prix d'Endurance, in either 2.4 litre, 3.4 litre or 3.8 litre form. It incorporates every desirable feature available in the light of present day knowledge of automobile engine design. Twin overhead camshafts act directly upon valves set at 70 degrees in hemispherical combustion chambers contained in a specially designed aluminium head incorporating Westlake patents. The finely balanced massive crankshaft is carried in seven exceptionally large bearings of two and three quarter inches diameter, thus ensuring complete absence of vibration or whip. The most stringent inspection is applied throughout every stage of manufacture and assembly and every engine is subjected to a four hours bench test followed by a road test check. No engine in the world has earned a higher reputation for longevity, longevity and complete reliability under all conditions than the Jaguar XK. And here this is the 3.4 litre twin overhead camshaft XK engine with a capacity of 3442 cc it develops 210 brake horsepower at 5500 rpm and the 3.8 litre engine has 87 mil bores by 106 millimeter stroke with cubic capacity of 3781 cc and develops 220 brake horsepower at 5500 rpm both with compression ratio of 8 to 1 and here we have the 2.4 litre engine down the bottom of the page same bore dimensions as a 3.4 but has a shorter stroke with a capacity 
of 2483cc it develops 120 brake horsepower at 5750 rpm so a revier unit but 100 brake horsepower give or take less than the 3.8 so that's quite quite a big difference so let's carry on here we've got a drawing here of the, the body shell and some dimensions which might come in handy if you're planning on buying a Mark II and wondering whether you'll actually fit inside it, so that could be useful. And opposite, we have the available colour schemes. So the exterior coachwork, you could have it in cream, Warwick grey, Sherwood green, dark blue, Mark black, Carmen red, opalescent silver grey, opalescent silver blue, golden sand, opalescent dark green, or opalescent maroon. And these were the, the interior options that you had with each of the particular colours. Or rather nice and on the back page here which would have been blank are some handwritten notes written by the, the gent who I bought this brochure from he was obviously particularly keen on the performance figures of the 3.8 uh, he was actually a, a racing driver himself so hence his interest in the 0 to 60s 8.5 seconds the standing quarter mile 16.3 the maximum speed 126 miles per hour so he was very keen on how quickly the car would go what the fuel consumption figures were, which is an interesting little insight into the buyer's thought process for the Mark II Jaguar. So that was the brochure, undated brochure, for the uh, Jaguar Mark II range of the early 1960s. I hope that was of interest. There are several brochure reviews on this uh, section of the uh, website and the, the old classic car YouTube channel now including for a few Jaguars, and I have got some more Jaguar brochures to publish on here shortly. So if this is your kind of thing, if you like these classic cars, cars of this era, please uh, like this video and subscribe to the channel, that way you'll be notified of any future uploads. So, hope that was of interest. Thanks for watching. Bye bye for now.